Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to all our 12th Monarchs out there in Monarch Nation on a very special Halloween edition of our press conference. I would like to remind everybody that uh, if you'd like to get a sneak peek of what my outfit will be this year, you can watch our weekly Wake Up with Wilder, done with our very own Ted Alexander. But please don't tell the kids, because I will be wearing that outfit tonight when they come visit my house uh, for Candy. There will be plenty of candy at the Wilder House tonight. Um, very excited with the 31-21 uh, to 21 win at UTEP. That puts our record at 5-3, and 3-1 three, three and one in Conference USA. Uh, give a lot of credit to, to Sean Kugler and, and the UTEP team. That's a tough physical team. Uh, it's a very tough place to play, and I uh, want to wish them well the remainder of the year. The, the keys to winning this game with us were, number one, the play of our, our special teams. We had uh, outstanding special teams play in this game, starting with Brad Davis, uh, his kickoffs. Uh, he was getting them down around the goal line. We had a couple, the first two in the game, that we tackled them on their five-yard line on the first one, and then on their 11-yard line, the second one, which was obviously critical early in the game uh, for field position. He also made a 43-yard field goal, which was a career long. So uh, Brad's doing an outstanding job for us. And our punter, uh, Bailey Kate, he had four punts, averaged 42.5 yards in this game. So overall, uh, the special teams definitely helped us in this game. Uh, secondly, the play of our offensive and defensive line uh, was critical to our success. Our offensive line was challenged with uh, the amount of blitz that you get from uh, UTEP. They're the top blitzing team in the league. And uh, those guys did a really good job with the communication, starting with Nick Clark, uh, our center. There was a lot that Nick had to do in coordination with David Washington, our quarterback, on making sure we had the blitzes identified. Uh, I thought they did an excellent job up front. And then our defensive line uh, consistently throughout the night with the pressure uh, we put on the quarterback. We only had two sacks in this game, but we hit the quarterback a number of times and, and didn't allow them to get some downfield throws that they were trying to get to with the amount of pressure um, that we put in this game. And then uh, lastly, um, Aaron Jones, their running back, who's outstanding. I think he's one of the best in the league. We held him to. 94 yards on 25 carries, which is a 3.8 yard average. Um, and then thirdly, uh, really the key to winning the game was the, the 21 to zero run that we had in about a seven minute stretch that ended uh, the third quarter and the fourth quarter. At that point, we trailed 13 to 10. So those were really the three key points uh, with the win offensively. We only ran 52 plays, uh, but we had 393 yards, and that was due to the fact we had a number of explosive plays in this game. Uh, Ray Lowry was healthy, uh, finally. This is the first time all year that Ray's been healthy. He had 17 carries for 131 yards and, and two touchdowns, and the majority of that was in the second half. He only had five carries and, and 21 yards in the first half. David Washington played a very good game. Uh, I can't stress enough how challenging it is when you play a team that blitzes as much as them. That puts a lot on your quarterback pre-snap. Uh, he was 14 for 22, 262 yards. He had two touchdowns and, and the one interception and uh, really had the play of the game with, with Melvin Vaughn when we trailed 13 to 10. Uh, we were in a stretch of almost 15 minutes where we had not touched the ball. Uh, it's the longest stretch I can ever remember uh, in the 30 years I've been coaching. They, they went on a long drive of about six minutes before the half to score, and then they received the second half kickoff and went on almost a nine-minute drive to score. So there was a stretch of nearly a full quarter uh, where we didn't have the ball. And when they scored to start the second half and took the lead at 13-10, we had a, had a critical play. Rashad Coward blocked the extra point. That got us some momentum back. And then the offense went down the field and scored. And we had a second and 10 on their 15-yard line. Uh, David was looking to throw an outside route. It was covered. He scrambled to his left towards our sideline. And initially, Melvin Vaughn came out of his route and was going to block. And then he worked to just find an opening. And David, uh, as he was about to step out of bounds, flipped the ball with his right hand without looking, uh, a no-look pass to Melvin. And then Melvin um, ran over two guys to score. And that, that changed the game. That got us up 17 to 13, got us a lot of momentum back in the game. That, that was clearly the, 
the play of the game. Jonathan Duhart played outstanding, five catches, 155 yards. He had a 77-yard a catch where he broke a couple tackles and dragged a defender. Um, I was joking with him about the fact that he, he got tackled on the one-yard line, uh, didn't quite get in, but just a, a sensational play. Uh, by Jonathan and, and we needed the wideouts to make those plays in this game with all the man coverage We had to win in some of those outside One-on-ones and our guys did uh, but again it, it started up front offensively the play of the offensive line and the blocking of, of Melvin Vaughn uh, Was critical for us defensively. We get off to a, a fast start uh, The players on defense really challenged themselves based off how the game started last week to get off to a, a fast start this week. And you know you can talk about it, but it comes down to execution. And they executed very well at the start of this game. The first drive, we had the interception uh, by Sean Carter. It should have been uh, a touchdown, but a little bit away from the play. Miles Fox blocked one of their offensive linemen very aggressively. Um, there's a, an added emphasis this year, which I agree with, by the officials that if a, a block or a hit does not need to happen, that they're going to throw the flag to protect the players. And that was one of those situations. It should have been a touchdown. We didn't score. Fortunately, um, Brad Davis made the field goal there. The second drive, we had the strip by Bradshaw, recovered by Zimenez. So the first two drives, our defense got two turnovers. And then their third and fourth drive, they were three and out uh, before they had those two long touchdown drives and then when we scored offensively to take the lead 17-13 our defense responded from that point with four straight stops um, by their offense they scored one late to make the final 31 to, to 21 so proud of our team and, and really proud of everybody in our organization this was two very difficult back-to-back -back trips we didn't get home after western kentucky till three in the morning we didn't get back um, this week until six in the morning so um, Really proud of everybody uh, for stepping up. Speaking to Marshall, um, this is still Marshall. Uh, as I've said to our players and our coaches, um, Marshall is Marshall. They've, they've traditionally been the best program in our league. They had a three-year stretch where they were 33-8. and eight. Um, And looking back, they've won their last four, four bowl games that they've played in. Um, this is a very good football team. They played a, a difficult schedule so far this year. Uh, they're excellent on special teams. They've got a very good quarterback, uh, and they're fast and they're physical on defense. So this is clearly going to be a major challenge uh, for our team coming up Saturday night. But we'll continue to keep our goal each week of trying to be 1-0 and each week, no matter who we play, and stay very focused on the process of winning, which for us is all about our planning and preparation during the week. And then going out Saturday and executing with the goal of being 1-0. and And I'll take questions. Coach, was uh, that play by Washington mm -hmm. flipped to Melvin Vaughn? Is that something that just happened just fluidly? I mean, is that just mm -hmm. him improvising? And no, that's pretty much how I drew it up. <laughs> yeah, that was. You know, that was just a, yeah. two guys uh, just, making a great play. And, and a lot of credit to Melvin also, because if Melvin doesn't recognize what David's about to do and stays on the block, there's no play. David would have to just hold on to the ball. But Melvin moved himself from behind the defender who was covering him, who came out of coverage to attack David and moved away. So David had a lane uh, to throw it. That was just re two really good football players uh, making a good play. Good job. Hmm? That was a nice draw. Nice, nice draw. It was a nice way to draw it up. Oh, a nice way to draw it up. Yeah, yeah. I can't take credit for that. <laughs> I mean, what's different about Marshall this year? I mean, what are they not doing that they've done the last three that mm -hmm. you've seen on film? What weaknesses do they have that they didn't have? Yeah, the, the first thing here is just a very difficult schedule. I mean, they played Louisville, uh, they played Pittsburgh, um, Southern Miss on the road. Um, from Southern Miss, you know, is obviously a very good team. Um, they had the, the tough trip when you got to go, you know, out to Texas, North Texas, playing good football. So that's number one. Played a difficult schedule. The, the difference from what they've been um, the last two years that we played them is traditionally they've led the league in rushing and they've led the league in rush defense. And they're not this year. They, they to this point, have not had the success that you're used to seeing from Marshall in the run game and stopping the run. And, you know, that's putting more 
Uh, more on Chase Litton, uh, who I think is one of the outstanding young quarterbacks in the country. I mean, he's still throwing for over 250 yards a game, um, but it's putting more pressure. It's allowing people to defend them differently than you've had to um, in the past. That's, that's the biggest difference I notice is um, they're not where they traditionally are in run and run defense. You touched on this Saturday night guys aren't necessarily looking at it going for that sixth win. You're looking mm -hmm. to winning the, the, the East. Mm -hmm. um, is that, is that, has that been, that's been the mentality all along? Has it? Yeah, when we started, uh, when we had our initial meeting at the start of the year and talked about our goals, it was um, what they've been just our third year being in Conference USA. They've been the same to work to compete to win the East. Um, and then to put ourselves in position to go to a bowl game. And uh, this is the first time that we've gone into November with a realistic shot to compete for the East. And you know, we've never been in this position. So, um, you know, the philosophy isn't changing. We're still trying to be 1 and 0 each week, but we all realize that we have one loss, and there's three teams in the East that have one loss. So, um, this is the first time we've even had an ability to discuss in November the, 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 the opportunity to control our destiny in terms of trying to maintain that, you know, that one loss. Anything else for Coach? Thank you all for coming. Uh, hopefully tonight, uh, if you do bring your children uh, by my house, just remind them that I'm not a scary person. I'll have a lot of candy uh, available for them. And to our 12th Monarchs, um, I believe the players would like you all, if you could, to wear black Saturday night, because they will be. Have a great week, everybody.